Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening and welcome to Zomato Limited's Q1 FY25 earnings conference call. From Zomato's management team, we have with us today Dipinder Goyal, founder and CEO, Akshan Goyal, chief financial officer, Albinda Singh Ninsa, founder and CEO of Dinkit, and Kunal Swaroop, head of corporate development. Before we begin, a few quick announcements for the attendees. Anything said on this call which reflects outlook for the future or which could be construed as a forward-looking statement may involve risks and uncertainties. Such statements or comments are not guarantees of future performance and actual results may differ from those statements. Additionally, please note that this earnings call is scheduled for a duration of 45 minutes and we will be starting directly with the Q&A section of the call. If you wish to ask a question, please use the raise hand feature available on your Zoom dashboard. We will announce your name on the call and unmute your line, post which you can proceed with your question. We will wait for a minute while the question queue assembles. First question is from the line of Ankur Rudra from JP Morgan. Please go ahead. Ankur, hi, can you hear us? Seems like we're facing some technical difficulties. We'll circle back to Ankur. Uh, next question is from the line of Vivek Maheshwari from Jeffries. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, can you hear me? Yeah, hi, yes. we can hear you. Hi, good evening. Uh, a few questions. First, on the you know food delivery business. So on a YY QOQ basis, the numbers look uh, you know growth looks quite impressive, uh, and it has come you know without any impact on margins by and large, which means that there may not be major uh, let's say promotion discounts uh, in the quarter. When we, you know, talk to some of the discretionary companies, uh, the view is that there has been a bit of, there may not be a slowdown, but a moderation in growth for sure. What, and, and, and bit of a caution from a near term perspective. What are your thoughts on the near term food delivery uh, business uh, in terms of growth? Any concerns in the horizon for you? Hi, Vivek, Akshant here. So, uh, I think uh, we, we think that uh, GOV growth of 20% plus, we should be able to continue uh, in the near term also. So to that extent, uh, uh, there might be, I mean, currently we're trending at 27, 28% year on year growth. So uh, that uh, might fall a little, but by and large, uh, don't see any specific concern on the demand side at this point, at least in our business. So Ashant, uh... The restaurants, I mean, you are not picking up any any caution from the restaurant partners, uh, you know? No, not nothing specific at this point. Interesting, interesting. And the other thing, Akshant, is, uh, you know, uh, on the margins bit in the food delivery business, so 4 to 5% uh, journey, do you think, uh, you know, by when do you, you know, target to get there? Is it going to be more moderate uh, from here? Or do you think by exit F25, you should be there? So hard to comment on exact timeline there. I think idea is to grow the right way and invest in areas that we need to while we continue to scale. So we're not thinking of a particular uh, timeline as a goal here and then working backwards from there. That's that's not how we are operating right now. Uh, but as you are seeing that the business in the, in the business, the margin has been expanding over time. And while we continue to also invest in growth and the long term platform health. So, and there's so many variables, as you're saying, there's also demand, which, which over the last two years in general has been unpredictable, uh, and, uh, uh, there is competition and, and so on. So I think, uh, we'll do the right things and hopefully, uh, continue on that journey on margin expansion from here on. And in few quarters from now, we should, uh, get to that range we're talking about. We're not very far from that now. Got it. Got it. And on the QC bit, you know, uh, so you have explained quite well in the letter, but this 2000, you know, dark stores by March 20, latest, I think you are saying latest by March 26, you know, two parts to that. One is the store ramp up, uh, you know, period. Uh, and, uh, you know, if you are adding the competition will also follow for sure. 
what could this imply from a profitability standpoint again i have gone through your letter in uh, detail but would love to know if you know if uh, uh, i think your guidance last time was uh, let's say a uh, flattish ebitda on an absolute basis for the next few quarters do you see that slipping into red in case you know both because of you adding stores and therefore inefficiency of the new store as well as competition following the suit and uh, in a micro market there may be more competition so uh, vivek like again very hard to say that i think at this point we don't think that will happen and that's why we have said that uh, you know we believe that the business will remain profitable but of course as you are saying there are so many variables and factors at play here so it's it's not like that uh, you know uh, what you're saying cannot happen it can but it doesn't look likely right now and uh, from a more longer term perspective i think we have fair confidence in the fact that this business can be as profitable as food delivery in terms of margin uh, if not more and you know by when we get to that margin is a function of again pace of expansion and uh, the competitiveness in the market which is hard to predict in the short term but from a long term perspective we feel fairly confident that we'll get there got it uh, and last question akshant uh, anything more on the you know on the announcement on district anything big picture can you share with us nothing we wait i think we uh, we would uh, we've mentioned about how we think about the going out business in the letter uh, and uh, i think we'll continue executing on that and share more updates as and when we have that so nothing specific beyond what we have shared in the letter got it looking forward to that and uh, wish you all the very best thank you thank you next question is from the line of vijay jain from city group please go ahead yeah hi thanks um uh, uh, sachant my question is um, you know um, first question just housekeeping one uh, there's a reduction in google maps apis from this quarter onwards for india right is that a material contributor to your bottom line uh, no vijay that is not going to impact our profitability meaningfully from here because okay. i mean what we read in papers is like more a headline number but uh, at least what we have analyzed it doesn't seem to impact our profitability meaningfully at this point correction akshan then second question is on the delivery related charges um, just wondering uh, uh, you know if the the increase qoq is uh, and likely on a per unit basis as well right and so is that across both uh, food delivery and quick commerce yeah the, um, hi this is kunal here vijay yeah, um, yeah there is some uh, increase but uh, what you can see from the pnl is a function of uh, the amount net of customer delivery charges right yes uh, so yes customer delivery charges have been declining as uh, you know our gold right. uh, proportion increases but as such uh, net of that uh, there is not no meaningful change to the delivery cost number got it correct and i have just one last question so in the quick commerce business uh, you know if i just look at the fixed costs uh, below the contribution line right it seems uh, largely flattish qoq now i know your wage increases uh, are september quarter right uh, if i remember this right so is that uh, is that how one should look at it here for the quick commerce business as well um, because one would have thought maybe there would be some gna increases uh perhaps here related to all the new tax shows ads etc yeah so vijit the total fixed cost that you would be compute is a function of multiple costs there right one is the corporate cost and then there's also marketing cost right uh, and therefore uh, you know some of these costs balance each other, other out so there would mm-hmm. be some increase in corporate cost because of the scale of the organization increasing but at the same time there could be a quarter where we spend a little less on marketing so uh, that's what ha- that's what would happen but uh, uh, so corporate cost would have grown um, but you don't Got see it at a total level Got it. And districts will be um, a separate app i I'm sorry if i missed that in the letter if you specifically mentioned that uh, or is it going to be you know the way going out shows up on the zomato app right now so this, yeah we're planning to launch this as a separate app and brand right 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 of course we will make sure that we take advantage of the traffic that we have on the zomato app hmm. uh, so it's going to be pretty much like how we uh, built blinkit 
uh, which is a separate brand, separate app, but still making sure that we keep our cost of customer acquisition lower using the traffic that we have on the Zomato app. Got it. Great. Thank you so much, and uh, congrats. Uh, great set of numbers again. Thank you. Thank you, Vishal. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Sachin Salgaonkar from Bank of America. Please go ahead. Hi, thanks for the opportunity and congrats for good set of numbers. Uh, three questions from me. Uh, first, uh, just wanted to understand in terms of opening up up stores going all the way to 2000. Uh, it's very clear that you will go into area where you guys are not an incumbent or have a first mover advantage. Uh, so, with that respect, how do you intend to differentiate versus competitor and uh, competitors and get the users to switch to your platform? as you know it's not easy uh, for users to switch which um, you know uh, you clearly are in a dominant position in an area like ncr and competitors often struggle out there to get any consumers from you as such and this is albinder uh, so even if the you look at the 113 stores that we opened in this quarter a significant number of them were not in ncr uh, our focus is to just maintain a high quality of service and in the markets where we are going we believe the service uh, at our level both in terms of the selection that we make available to the customers and the consistency of the service uh, those are not uh, actually at the same level that we provide uh, so when we are opening these locations as well we are finding success in getting customers to start adopting our service over time got it i'll wonder just a quick follow up out here any sense on overlap uh, between users between zomato and other platforms or other blanket and other platforms it's not something that we actively track got it uh, second question is on the blanket take rate uh, assume this quarter uh, i think we should not read too much given the gmv mix or you know was there anything particular which didn't lead to an improvement in take rate out here i think take rate is uh, is very you know dependent on a lot of factors right uh, we uh, also had some amount of like the food inflation which was baked into i think about 2 rupees 40 paisa uh, when it came to the uh, aovs for staples and other products uh, and when there is more inflation sellers usually tend to uh, pass along some of the cost benefits to the customer to maintain competitiveness so take rates usually are a function of a lot of these things uh, and because still a large chunk of the business is fmcg food and staples so those factors are also fairly significant when we are looking at take rate so uh overall we are seeing our uh you know proportion of products outside of the core category increasing and that also has higher take rates but uh, i don't think you can read a lot into uh the product mix based on uh, the take rate situation got it and from a 3 to 4 year perspective what should lead to an improvement in take rate is it mainly the mix or is it the ad i think uh, both of them also the delivery fee that's also part of the take rate that you're computing so it's the cross margins uh, the delivery fee and ad income so we think uh, we should see benefit accruing on across all these three line items thanks very clear and my last question is on the size of the stores uh, clearly you guys are opening more stores and you know what you said into a shareholder a shareholder letter is you guys are gaining share from e-commerce So is there a thought process to have bigger dark stores than the existing ones and hence uh, improve the assortment? Uh yeah, I think we open uh, our preference is to always open larger stores and our current inventory of the stores that we are looking at to open are uh, on average larger than the ones that we have. But that's a lot of it is dependent on the real estate available in the cities. Uh so it usually tends to be a mix. Got it. Thanks and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Aditya Soman from CLSA. Please go ahead. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, hi, Aditya. Hey, we can. Excellent. Uh, so, a few questions. So, firstly, on uh, blanket dark stores, uh, any idea of how much of these would be sort of owned or unmanaged by you versus uh, outsourced? as it are our, uh, our attempt is to make sure that every new store that we open that eventually it is run by uh, a local partner understand uh, and uh, and how much of the growth uh, was in blinkit was driven by new skus uh, uh, given that you are really expanding the number of skus so i think uh, 
overall, uh, you know, we don't actually buy, demarcate it uh, and provide that information. Uh, but we've been adding SKUs consistently over the last four quarters. And some of our categories have become rather large as uh, percentage of the platform. So they are now starting to contribute meaningfully uh, to the overall growth number as well, because the customer wallet share goes up for us when that happens. No, understand very clear. And, and just in terms of uh, on the switching gears to the food business, uh, any sense on uh, the order growth uh, on the food side, uh, how that's trended? And and secondly, on uh, the subs- gold subscribers, uh, can you give us any sense on uh, that number of gold sub- sub- subscribers and how that is changing delivery fees? Well, on the uh, uh, food delivery side, the uh, GOV growth is uh, largely a function of order volume growth. Uh, uh, there is a little bit of AOV growth as well year on year, but mostly it's uh, order volume growth. And uh, as far as gold membership is concerned, I think the program has sort of matured now in terms of size. It is increasing uh, month on month, but uh, there is no large movement from uh, the data that we shared a couple of quarters ago when we said that almost half of our uh, GOV is from gold members. So we are ballparking the same 50-55% zone today on, on the Zomato Gold membership base. No, that that's very clear, and and maybe just one follow up on on Blinkit. Uh, the new dark store uh, sort of order count. Uh, uh, you mentioned a few uh, in the uh, two calls ago that you, know, you were sort of hitting uh, your uh, thousand orders a day in two months, and then it would widen. Uh, where are we today in terms of for the 113 that you've launched in the previous quarter? It's pretty much same right now, Aditya. That uh, that you know, in terms of getting to that scale, we're still taking two three months. Fair enough. All right. That's it from me. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Swapnil Portuke from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Hi, guys. Uh, Congratulations on a good set of numbers. Uh, My first question is more of a clarification uh, with respect to the uh, comment that you have uh, mentioned that uh, the industry uh, growth expectation in food delivery is around 30%. Uh, is that uh, an uh, 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 indirect way of suggesting that you expect to grow at 30% uh, GOV uh, next five years? Uh, and if that is the case, uh, uh, we have been growing at around uh, 25 to 30% last three, four quarters. Uh, what gives you that uh, confidence of growing at a faster rate? So just to be clear, that statement is for our own business. So what we mean there is that FY22 to FY24, our food delivery GOV has grown at 30%. So we're not talking of the industry there. Yeah, but do you aspire to grow at that rate? And uh, and if that is the case, uh, what would be the levers uh, that, that will drive higher growth? Uh, uh, we are already price? growing at 27, 28%, right? So we're very close to that, right? And, uh, we, uh, you know, we're trying to, uh, uh, we do believe that there is, there is a chance that we continue growing at that pace. But as we said, I think the overall expectation from a longer term perspective is still that we should at least grow at 20%. But as we are seeing in the last few quarters, we're doing more than that, right? So uh, we don't know whether we will be able to deliver 30 or not, but at least 20% should should be possible. Got it. Very clear. Uh, the second question is uh, also a kind of a clarification. So your take rates in food delivery has uh, improved, uh, you know, Q on Q. Your contribution margins have come down. Now, you did call out uh, that uh, the higher share of gold is uh, did affect your delivery charges. Uh, was there an, also an element of uh, the elections or the heat waves uh, uh, affecting the supply and that con- uh, leading to some incremental spends? Yes, that's right, Swapnil. That did play a role uh, in slightly lower contributions mar- contribution margins in this quarter. And we should expect that to reverse uh, going ahead, um, some of it, if not all. That is right. But again, in this quarter, we have expect rains, right? So that again puts a pressure on the delivery cost. So I think at different quarters, there are different dynamics on different line items. But the overall larger message is that directionally, uh, the overall adjusted EBITDA margin should continue increasing from here. Got it. Uh, and then uh, one uh, question on the macro front. Uh, so we have been hearing a lot of uh, uh, things from the government that uh, they are planning to work on social security benefits for the delivery partners. Uh, and if those things uh, do take, uh, you, uh, you know, past, uh, how do you see uh, the impact on your uh, margins uh, 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 across the board, both food delivery, you know, quick commerce, that way? 
so uh, you know th- there is no clarity on on uh, on these uh, topics at that at this point uh, so the different states are taking a different view on how these uh, welfare benefit should be administered and exact impact on the pnl is not clear at this point right but we don't expect it to be very meaningful and uh, you know and at this point we don't expect it should impact our margins right we should be able to absorb this in our business or even pass on to the customers if needed got it uh and uh, on blinkit uh, so there is a uh, mention about uh, share shift from uh, mid to premium range uh, modern retail uh, in large cities uh, will it be possible to uh, you know explain uh, which uh, retail uh, uh, formats are we uh, uh, talking about uh, or it, uh, you can use some examples uh, to uh, uh, to explain uh, what do you mean by that point okay so apnel uh, so i think when we talk about you know modern organized retail it is multi uh, you know multi store format organized retailers uh, which might not be at the scale of uh, you know the the hypermarts but ones that are used by customers more often for during the week purchases so you know uh, you know i would rather not name uh, the other players but uh, i'm sure like there would there would be plenty of examples in every city of uh, of this kind of a modern format which is typically you know multi store uh, operated uh, and catering to the premium end of the customers got it uh, and just the last one uh, so uh, we have seen some increase in your capex uh, this quarter q on q uh, now is that uh, uh, entirely related to blinkit uh, 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 uh especially given the fact that you made a comment just a, a few minutes back that uh you you are partnering with local partners uh, for new store expansion uh, so uh, so how do we tie up uh, that uh, increase in capex uh, uh... Uh, hi swapnil kunal here so it's a combination of the blinkit uh, store scale up um, and uh, partly also where we're increasing some warehousing capacity on the hypercure side so i think it's a it's both of these things uh, combined but a larger proportion is the linkit part and, and so, uh, there is a clarify, yeah sorry uh, just to clarify so uh, even when we open stores with partners our policy now is that uh, we actually take the upfront cost of the capex because we find that we are able to uh, do a higher quality capex rather than uh, expecting the partners to invest uh, in the high quality capex set that we expect understood and and if uh, uh, there's also a working capital release of around 175 crores if i'm not wrong uh, is that a, a related to the calendar dates uh, that are used to highlight earlier and uh, or something else yeah so apnel so it's it's that and also i think a little bit of uh, uh, growth uh, in in in, uh, in line with the growth in hypercore business right so that's a business where we have positive working capital so as that business is growing we we have seen some working capital growth on account of that also got it uh, so thanks a lot guys for the opportunity and all the best and keep doing well thanks thank you thank you next question is from the line of gorav rateria from morgan stanley please go ahead uh hi thanks for taking my question and congratulations on a solid set of results uh, my first question is on food delivery uh want to understand how broad based the growth was across top 8 and non top 8 cities and when we look at the top 8 cities what's been the driving factor for growth it is also driven by the user growth is it more by frequency is it more by average order value just trying to understand the uh, key factors driving the growth in top 8 as well hi gorov uh, i think the growth is fairly broad based across uh, you know the top 8 and the non top 8 i think uh, like we mentioned before top 8 uh, you know even today the supply from a supply standpoint um, we still have enough work to do on supply sufficiency both in terms of onboarding existing restaurants and increasing the choice uh, of of uh, for customers in terms of new restaurants and cuisine so i think uh, as we work on supply uh, that has had a bearing on growth as well um not too much i wouldn't uh, uh, you know attribute too much of the growth to aov like akshant mentioned earlier as well uh, so it's largely more supply sufficiency more customers and um, that has been the bigger driver in the top 8 
Got it. Uh, secondly, on quick commerce, if I look at, you know, any online model has three key tenets, right? Selection, price, and convenience. So how are we solving for selection? You did mention that some locations have gone to the extent of 22,000 SKUs, but there is always a pull and push between the size of stores uh, required to store these SKUs and the time required to deliver the same within the mentioned bracket of 10 to 20 minutes, right? So I'm just trying to understand that uh, typically, this is a constraint from a business model perspective. How are you solving for that? And uh, what's been the experience in some of these locations where you are been able to take the SKUs to more like 20,000 plus? Gaurav, I think uh, the experience for the customer is always more delightful when they have a larger selection, like you said. Uh, and I think how we do it, uh, that's part of the magic, and we would rather not talk about that. <laughs> okay. And last question, uh, uh, you know, from a use of cash perspective, you've been generating cash. Uh, uh, any opportunities uh, that you would be looking from in an organic perspective or any change in philosophy or thought process from returning of cash to shareholders? Thank you. So, yeah, no, nothing beyond what we've already shared, uh, uh, Gaurav, in terms of uh, investment opportunities and uh, even on uh, distribution uh, back to shareholders, as we have mentioned in the past, uh, that's not something we are considering right now. We want to retain strong balance sheet at this point. Thank you. All the best. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Samar Patel from Equirus. Please go ahead. Uh, am I audible? Yes, 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 you are. Uh, uh, thanks for providing this opportunity. Uh, my first question is to uh, Akshan. Uh, like we have implemented a platform fee, uh, or you can call it convenience fee of rupees five to six in food delivery, which was almost zero last year. Now, given that the only online category which successfully imp have implemented convenience fee is the OTA sector, right? So how much flexibility do we have to potentially increase this platform fee without adversely affecting our uh, volume growth in food delivery? Yeah, so I think we'll know that only with time. As you're saying, this is something, some little bit of untested waters for for a business like ours. Uh, so yeah, we're taking step by step uh, and, and we'll see how sensitive the demand is to, to the platform fee and, and take a business call accordingly. Okay. Uh, just follow up to that question. Is it going to be like a dynamic fee? So let's say uh, in terms of the higher volume uh, for any particular day, uh, are we planning to char uh, charge a different platform fee or uh, more or less it is going to be the static in nature? You know, all these are options. And as I said, nothing is cast in stone. Like, so we keep experimenting with ideas uh, and uh, depending on what makes more sense is I think like what we'll take that call and move on. So at this point, uh, there's no fixed formula here that we have in mind and that we want to stick to. So we have to be open-minded and keep experimenting. Okay. Uh, thank you. That was helpful. Now, the second question to uh, Albinda, like, uh, can you share some, uh, uh, let's say, qualitative insights in terms of ramp up of uh, new dark stores? Uh, uh, you you mentioned that uh, the order volume growth is similar to uh, uh, last year dark store opening, but uh, in terms of let's say uh, breaking ever, uh, breaking even at a uh, store level, if you can uh, just share some insight because uh, the AOV could be uh, different, right? In uh, the the the, the uh, market that we are getting into, so that largely determines the profitability. So if you can uh, just share some qualitative insights there. Um, like you said in the last call as well, uh, the path to profitability of a store is dependent on a lot of factors. Uh, one of which is, you know, the geography in which we open and whether it's a store uh, in geography that we already operate in, uh, the kind of uh, area that that store serves. So there are a lot of qualitative factors there. Uh, we don't like to look at averages when it comes to, you know, what time it takes for a store to get there. Uh, I think we will, we rather internally track each store's journey uh, and have its own timeline and whatever is the outcome that's that's what we are confident of uh, in general what we've seen is that that number has been going down as our, our network has been expanding and the brand has been getting stronger uh, as well as our selection across the board has gotten better uh, understood 
Understood. And the last question is uh, uh, like as uh, 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 pa previous participant also asked, like we have been expanding our uh, SKU. Uh, so currently in some of the stores, as you mentioned in shareholder letter, we are at 25,000 unique SKUs, right? Now there is always going to be trade-off between speed, cost and assortment width. So uh, 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 like are we okay to sacrifice some sort of speed and cost uh, to uh, increase our assortment width or uh, uh, like given the kind of tech enable model we uh, have, we are confident that we will be able to uh, have cost and speed within the defined cartels and be able to uh, increase the assortment width and how far we are uh, from the maximum number of SKUs that we can add into the staff stores. So, Sumat, uh, I think the answer is the second one that uh, we want to stick and we continue to stick to delivering all of this assortment uh, in 10 minutes, uh, and that will also always be our operating principle moving forward as well. Uh, in terms of what is the uh, SKU count uh, that we can reach, I think uh, uh, as we expand more and we uh, we add more SKUs, uh, we also keep innovating on that front. So I don't think that there is a limit that we can define to that that's a maximum number of SKUs that we'll be able to serve in a neighborhood. Uh, in the same neighborhood two years ago used to serve, we used to serve about 5,000 units. Now we're at 25,000. So I think that number can still go up meaningfully. Understood, understood. That was really helpful. Uh, thank you and Congress on great set of numbers. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Manish Podar. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, hi. thanks for uh, giving me the opportunity. So I have uh, uh, three questions. First is, uh, you know, uh, Akshant, if you can help me understand, let's say in the food delivery business, let's say, you know, in markets of South India, how would now our market shares be trending in your view? So I think our market, will, I mean, our market is fairly broad. Uh, it's hard to uh, have a sense of uh, the absolute market share. But I think what we're able to track is directionally, uh, uh, how are we growing compared to the overall industry that includes aggregators and uh, restaurants who also sell directly to their platform. And in some of the markets in the South, if you take a slightly longer view, last two, three years, we think our market, uh, the penetration and the share that we have in those markets has grown meaningfully. But let's say if, if, if you have a national market share versus the market share in those regions, you know, is the gap let's say within a 10 percentage point or, you know, we think still so. a 20, we 25 percent so. gap. So. Oh, no, I think we're very you know, close to our national average in, even in the cities in the South where historically three, four years ago, we were uh, meaningfully lower. Okay. That's interesting to hear. The second one is, let's say in the grocery business, you know, uh, what would the broader mix be? How much would be the share of, let's say, general merchandise and fresh except dairy? Hi, Manish. Uh, so in the blanket business, we don't provide that breakup. Okay. Let, let me put, uh, if you don't give me that, let's say in terms of uh, in terms of scaling this, let's say from the store count today to let's say, you know, let's say 1800 to 2000 stores in the next two years, wh what really is the hindrance in terms of doing that in your view? I think our ability to execute, nothing more. Okay. And uh, the last one in terms of, uh, uh, just in terms of capital allocation, so uh, let's say uh, probably the deal of, uh, you know, there was this media article going across that is not happening and we, we've gone ahead and doing this organic and now cash is also growing for the last few quarters. So wa what is the thought with the cap cash on books? That's it. Thank you. Manish, at this point, as I mentioned in response to a previous question and also in our past letters, I think we we I, there is a big value of having a strong balance sheet uh, given that we are in multiple businesses and most of our competition is, is our private companies with large balance sheets as well. So there is no plan uh, for uh, distributing the cash uh, at this point. So we'll just like hold the balance sheet. Okay. Th thank you so much. Great show and all the best, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in the interest of time, we will now move on to take the last one to two questions. The next question is from the line of Rahul Jain. Please go ahead. Uh, 
how you can you hear us hello yeah i can hear you please go ahead so uh, yeah thanks uh, congrats on strong performance uh, just curious to understand any specific reason for highlighting need uh, to you know of this score count that we will go from 1000 to 2000 right away and is there any insight that why we need uh, you know so many stores is it because the average mpu per store is not expanding significantly and that's why to address a larger audience the need for expanding the store base has to be significantly higher or you you see a certain cap in terms of number of uh, order frequency uh, per household in an area which would mean that uh, addressing a larger audience uh, becomes a critical element to grow rather than expanding in the same uh, space no so there is there is no expansion in the same space here right space is a store here uh, and uh, you know what we have shared here is our opportunity and outlook on what the, how large can this business become for us and we have shared it now because we feel confident uh, about getting to uh, these kind of outcomes uh, so as we've done in the past uh, we made sure that uh, we transparently communicate on how we view growth opportunities in the business without being overly aggressive or controlling and in that spirit that you know we've shared the uh, with our customers and this mtu uh, per store kind of a matrix uh, uh, of achieving 11 12000 uh, uh, number is it is it a good given the kind of a radius and density uh, that you cater to for a particular store or is there any specific benchmark which is an ideal number we don't uh, think of the business in in, in this way rahul so i'm unable to comment on this that's it that's it for myself thank you so much Thank you. Next question is from the line of Kirat Atluri from Chetha Global. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, hi, management team. Um, you know, I know you don't want to reveal uh, the secret sauce, but I think it'd be helpful for everyone to just understand, you know, how much software and uh, sort of how how exactly are you achieving high service levels with what is effectively a franchise model. Uh, It, it, you know, we've seen many franchise models in different countries scale, but it requires to be high levels of you know, operating rigor and uh, all kinds of internal systems. So maybe you can just can break it down at a high level as to what are you know two or two or three things you do to achieve this outcome that would be pretty hard for a new or existing player to to you know to replicate um, because essentially you're arguing you can. you know this is sort of like mcdonalds right you're sort of arguing that you can scale uh while maintaining service levels um you can scale to to very high numbers so i'm sure this is not as easy as partnering with some local guy and setting up a box and just putting skews in the store you know this has got to be more complexity to this so if you could just help people understand that that would be helpful agreed uh so like you said a lot of this is uh the uh the systems and the tech that we've built over the years that uh, helps us to achieve this but that also comes with the operating rigor that we have to put into place so those are givens uh, and i think uh, we generally uh, foster a, a culture of innovation so that we can actually try to get to these outcomes because we we feel that these create real value for the customers uh, so when we are thinking of selection we are not really thinking of constraints we are thinking of how to make it happen uh, and that's the culture of the organization and we solve for that and i believe that once you start solving for it and you build the right systems you build them over a long enough period of time uh that you will you will get to these outcomes so uh, to your question i don't think it is as easy to replicate uh of course it's always possible uh but i think it uh, it does require uh, not just uh, you know uh, operating rigor but also a lot of systems uh, and the knowledge of how the entire ecosystem works and of course great partners Hi, Kira. Are you there? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from Yanov Abhishek Banerjee from ICICI. Please go ahead. 
yeah uh, hi a uh, couple of questions from my side uh, first uh, is on the uh, order value so uh, aov uh, would it be correct to imagine that uh, it is uh, broadly in line with what we saw last quarter or would the 425 ish be a better number hi abhishek we don't uh, provide that metric so we'll not be able to comment on that Okay, fair enough. But see, the reason I was asking is, if I take that the last quarter number was there, and the uh, you know the whatever take rate improvement uh, has happened, which is about fifty bips, if I take out the delivery fees, then uh, the assumption is that almost thirty bips is coming from platform fees. So, is the rest coming from advertising? That is what basically I'm trying to understand. Yeah, so again, we'll not be able to comment on specific levers of margin improvement. We don't do that because of comparative reasons, as you can appreciate. Uh, oh. But yes, I mean, in the past, uh, you mentioned that ad ad revenue is growing for us, uh, and so is platform fee. That is fairly evident to everyone as consumers. So yeah, those two uh, have played a role even in this quarter. Got it, sir. So uh, now going to the. Um... Hype up your business. I know you don't talk too much about it, but uh, it has scaled up. Uh, I mean, even beyond what the most bullish guys were thinking, it's now a five thousand crore uh, uh, revenue business. So, uh, could you give us some, uh, at least some uh, more details on it? Say things like uh, how many restaurants are being serviced and all. Yeah, so uh, uh, you know it's growing well the business, and but having said that, we still feel that uh, there's a lot of work to be done in terms of unlocking a much larger TAM than what we can see right now for this business, and hence, uh, as you would see, uh, focus is more on discovering that and and uh, solving new problems than than on profitability at this point, right? So we want to just like run this business close to break even. And and see uh, if if there are newer markets or newer customer segments within the restaurant industry that we can unlock. Mm-hmm. Uh, done few experiments and we continue to do some experiments around that. And uh, I think like yeah, as and when the, those scale, we'll be happy to share uh, more details uh, with everyone. Got it. So the the angle I was asking this was from that. We have always heard about commissaries that uh, you know these large uh, QSR chains have. So, would it be possible to at least give some idea of what would be your pricing differential with uh, these commissaries? So, we today we actually don't even cater to these large QSR QSR chains as our customers. Yeah. Our, our customer segment today is like sort of middle level restaurants with few outlets, right? So, so the value proposition there is higher quality supply, you know, delivered in. Uh, in a predictable fashion, uh, on demand, pretty much right on the next day, uh, and priced comparatively. So, so that value prop today uh, is serving well a uh, large section of these restaurants, and I think we need to think harder and and create value propositions for rest of the restaurant industry, uh, where we are able to add value to what they are doing today, and therefore get more business from them. That's a WIP for us. Understood. And finally, on the uh, capex part that uh, Kunal briefly mentioned, uh, with regards to you doing the capex yourself in some of the dark stores, but I'm sure that you will not be doing that free of cost. Right? You would be taking some deposit money or something from uh, from your partners. So where is that coming up? Is that coming up in the other items uh, uh, line? Abhishek, we don't recognize that as uh, as revenue, or we don't actually have that part of it. It's uh, it's in the form of a bank guarantee from the partners, so it doesn't actually come on our books. Oh, okay. But but any any specific reason why you would do that? I mean, that would make your balance sheet even better, right? Um, I think we want to be fair to our partners. Uh, a lot of the partners that we get on board are hardworking. Uh, you know. Uh, small business owners that actually want to have a larger business. And a lot of the time, they don't actually have the means to be able to invest large amounts, but they can provide a bank guarantee against some of their assets. Right. Uh, so to be fair to them, we don't want them to, uh, you know, we would, don't want to be riding on their cash. 
uh, we go through rigorous process to select them and we trust that you know they will operate our business the right way but at the same time we also want to nurture the ecosystem so that the hard working folks actually get an opportunity to upgrade their life by working with us understood but that also kind of gives me the uh, idea that probably uh, so is, is one entrepreneur being given multiple dark shows in that sense they have to prove mm-hmm. themselves with the first one but then we can give them that's on our discretion understood understood so uh, that, that was very very helpful thank you so much sir for the opportunity and yeah again excellent performance and i think not much to add on that thanks thanks abhishek thank you ladies and gentlemen we will now conclude this conference call thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines